Yeah, the reception to Uncharted 2 obviously was uh, thrilling. Nice. It's so hard when you're so close to a game that you've slaved away on for months and months and months that, you know, all you're going to see initially are the faults. So, you know, when the review stores started coming in, we're like, wow, really? Really? Wow, they didn't notice that thing? Oh, wow, okay, great, awesome. Uh, like getting like so many Game of the Years and like just uh, all those perfect scores and whatever, just so much praise for one game. How many times did it happen in, in your life? Uh, if one if you're very, very lucky. But at the same time, there was also that, uh, oh shit, people's expectations are gonna be through the roof for the sequel. Guess we better get started. Okay, so we just wanted to uh, go through everything uh, now that we have everybody here and just sort of see where everything stands, because uh, we had the marketing meeting last week. Uh, everybody loves the direction of the trailer. Uh, nobody had any real changes except for, you know, just make it look pretty and get it finished. So at this point, it's, we're just gonna try to start nailing down some of the details. We feel like people are interested in what we're gonna do next. And so we wanted to, to make a piece that sort of suggested, like, this is where the game is going. Obviously, the uh, teaser is kind of a uh, big deal, so a lot of my energy is going into that. But yeah, it's it's a little terrifying, to be honest. There's a lot more pressure now on us than I think there ever has been. <laughs> so, making Uncharted Three, uh, the, there's a, a ton of pressure. It's a crushing amount of pressure, to be honest. And and some of it's self-imposed, and some of it's just naturally imposed by the circumstances. When you know that you've got a big fan base out there that's like waiting for any scrap of information and can't wait for the next game. Uh, I'll tell you, it's there's something to be said for just being under the radar and you know being kind of the dark horse that nobody's heard about yet. We want to meet and beat people's expectations, but I mean, frankly, we're just putting a lot of our own pressure on ourselves to do a better game than we did last time. We're never satisfied anyway, so it's like, uh, yeah, pressure from the outside compared to where we have inside. Piece of cake. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's nothing. So you have to just have the faith that whatever instincts got you to this point will continue carrying you through as long as you keep listening to them. We've always done our mocap at mocap, other mocap studios, and now we have our own stage. It's kind of cool. Pretty rad. Yeah. No. Uh, have you guys seen this already? We showed this to you yesterday. Yeah, but with the Caesar, yeah. Okay. 14 for what you wish for. Might just get you. Right. What the hell does it mean? Just watching some YouTube you, stuff. You. Action. Uh-huh. Well, that's all real pretty, but what the hell does it mean in English? <laughs> it means be careful what you wish for. It might just get you. Did you know how popular it was going to be when you stepped onto the project? I had no idea what it was. I remember just going to the audition, I was just in one of those great moods, and uh, and here I am sliding over the thing and jumping, knocking over chairs, and I didn't care, I didn't know what it was, it's a TV show, I thought it was a voiceover job, I didn't really know, but I was just in a good mood. And then they hire me, I'm like, oh great, whatever, and then we get into it, and you realize what it is, and you start going. And then it's like, and then you realize, and then, you're having so much fun. That was in perfect time. And I was given so much freedom. It was one of the first times in my career that I was given the freedom to really contribute and help create this character from my own personality. We're all kids in the sandbox, you know, having a good time, playing. Yeah. And that's why, you know, uh, the, the old name of, uh, uh, the old title of actors was Players. And uh, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to play like this is real. And people love it so much. And they're like, I mean, greatest game I've ever played. You know, it's incredibly flattering. And it just, it, like I said, it's the best job I've ever had in 15 years in this business. Television, film, doesn't matter. 
There's, there's nothing better than this. All men dream, but not equally. Anything different in tone, though? Was that, was that getting a little crusty, it, little a little crusty? A little, little too dreamy, I think. All men dream. Yeah, well, yeah, but be not careful. Equally. Careful about, yeah, get, don't get too crusty, because this is yeah. the first time Drake's voice I... is going to be heard in this trailer that's going out at the Spike VGAs, okay. basically. So um, you want to make sure it's all recognizable. Well, I would say we're both excited and worried about our approach to the trailer and how the audience might react to it. You know, in the midst of a lot of other quick cut trailers and, and trailers that may be focusing on the visceral experience, doing something that was more of a vignette that had a mood to it is both maybe a positive thing because it may make us stand out, but a risk because it may make us stand out in the wrong way, right? That's always the concern, is you want to be going off in a direction that's bold, but, you know, you're rolling the dice. This, I did. It's it's interesting because the, the, the it's just, so yeah Uncharted two, big success, awesome. But we never made Uncharted two uh, just for that. That was not what was driving us. It's just I, I really hope like the fact we got so much success is it, it didn't change us, and we still true to ourselves. I want to just keep making games with passion and just coming to work every day and just make the game that we want to, uh, to play. And, and that's, that's, that's pretty much it. What comes after that, we'll see, we'll see. Thank you.